We are solving example number two of section 19.124. Uh, so here we have two gears that they are connected, right? They, they meet in this point and they carry the same velocity at that point where they meet. And uh, gear B is uh, subjected to a moment, which has this expression right here. And we are given the weight of both gears, and we are given also the radius of gyration of both gears. And we are being asked to find the angular velocity of the gear A after five seconds, and if the gears start turning from rest. We have here uh, forces involved, and we have here a moment involved, and we have time. And we are being asked angular velocity after a certain amount of time. So any time that we have time, involved with forces and velocity, one good approach to do is the principle of angular momentum. So that's how we are going to solve this problem today. So the solution will be apply the principle of angular momentum. The principle of angular momentum is the angular impulse equals the integral at moments respect to one point, in this case A or B, respect to time. And that will be the difference between the angular momentum in position 2 minus the angular momentum in position 1. A represents the center of mass of this gear, and B represents the center of mass of this gear. Since we will take moment about those points, we need the inertia, because as you recall, the definition of the angular momentum is the, the mass moment of inertia times the angular velocity, right? And the, for B will be the mass moment of inertia for B and angular velocity of B. So how much is the mass moment of inertia of A? As you remember, that will be by the definition of the radius of gyration will be the radius of gyration times the mass of A. So if we calculate that, that will be 0 0.5 square. And as you remember, we have the weight and the mass is a derived unit, which is 1532.2, which is the gravity. And that's equals to, I have the result right here. Zero point one one six slot feet square, and inertia mass uh, mass moment of inertia B with the same approach will be zero point thirty five times ten over thirty two point two, and the mass moment of inertia of B will be zero point zero three eight log feet square. So that's the characteristics of our gears. OK, so to apply the, the uh, principle of angular momentum, I will do the free body diagram of my, my gears of A. I will draw it a little bit smaller so that I have a space. So here, what forces do I have? I have two forces in A, A, so using my coordinate system X and Y, I will have A, Y, and A, X. I have the weight of A. And what do I have? What else do I have? I have a reaction because those um, two gears, when they are in contact, I have the contact reaction. So let me draw that reaction over here, reaction. And if I do the free body diagram, free body diagram of B, I will have by action and reaction exactly the same force, but in the opposite direction. I have also two uh, forces, B X and B Y. I have the weight of B, and I have a moment applied to that gear which is this one right here, moment. 
So I will apply this equation, the same equation for gear A and the same equation for gear B. So for let's free body diagram A, we have what what moments do we have that apply to that? Only the reaction, right? So and the and the we have the radius of that gear, so it will be the integral of that reaction times the radius, which is 0 0.8 delta T from 0 to my time. That will be equals, since it starts from rest, that's why we have to really read the question. We know that the first position is 0. So this will be equals only to the inertia, the mass moment of inertia, times the velocity A2. We integrate that and we have our first equation will be, will be equals to 0 0.8 my reactions time equals to that moment of inertia that I calculated here. Zero point one one six uh, times the velocity a two, and actually I can say that if the time is five right seconds, I finally can substitute for five, and I get the equation. This is zero point eight times five will be four r equals zero point one one six omega a two. So that's my first equation that involves two unknowns. It involves r and involves um, the angular velocity of this gear that is actually what I want to find. And since this gear move in this direction, I am saying that this gear move like that. And therefore, since the velocity in those two points are equal, see this velocity is equal to that velocity, and then necessarily this gear move in this direction. So it's positive. That's why I put a positive sign right there. Okay? Okay, so for the for the free body diagram of B, I have the integral zero to time, which is also five seconds. Now I have my reaction for times this uh, a radius, which will be reaction for radius of B, which is 0 0.5, is also positive that moment. And then I have that moment negative 2. That moment is given, right? 1 minus e exponential 0 0.5 T. And all that I have to integrate it respect to time. And that will be equals to my inertia in B, velocity B. Two. That velocity, when I substitute the, the equation, I will uh, set it as negative. As you see in my, in my drawing, this is a negative velocity and this is a positive velocity. Well, I have to integrate that. You all remember how to integrate that. That will give me R 0 0.5 T, and this is equals to 2 and this will be equal minus negative times negative is positive, but with that sign called that this is e to the minus 0 0.5 t. And all that I have to evaluate in 0 and 5. And that is equal to moment of inertia, which is where I'm going to put negative for the reason that I just told you, negative 0 0.038 angular velocity of b. As you see, we, here we'll, we have another equation. Let me write that equation. All that gives me, so if I put 5 over here, 2.5 r minus 10 minus, I have to evaluate in 5 and then in 0. That is negative 4a, 0 0.55 plus 4 equals 2. OK, here I'm going to, since I have too many unknowns, I will relate those two velocities and to angular velocities as, as you remember, these uh, ve velocities relate by the radius. Since those two velocities are equal, let me write it very small right here. So that will be 
this linear velocity will be 0 0.8 omega a, and this velocity will be equals to 0 0.5 omega b. So actually, I can substitute angular velocity b by the angular velocity of a, 0 0.8, divided by 0 0.5. So I'm going to write that down here. It's negative 0 0.038, and I'm going to write it 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.5 angular velocity of a. So that's my second equation. And you have to solve the system of equations. And as you see, I have only two unknowns. So this is my second equation. And solving system of equations, I get the velocity of A. The velocity of A is equals to 47.47 radians over second. And the velocity of B in the second position will be 75.95 radians over second. OK, so those are my two, my, my, that's the solution of the problem.